we're going to review a little bit about how to calculate the differential in a in, in, an, in an example. Um, so let's let's take the example to be the function of three variables and having a codomain of R2. So this function is given by z e to the negative x squared y comma y cosine logarithm of x squared. First of all, what is the domain of this function? Um, the domain of this function, uh, since the logarithm can't ever be zero, we know that zero can't be included, but otherwise everywhere else the function is defined. So this gives us a function from r minus the origin cross r cross r to r2. To calculate the differential of this function at an arbitrary point x, y, z, all we have to do is calculate what it is on each of the components. So we can focus, for instance, on the second component. And what we'll do is we'll do a little bit of blend of applying the differential without using partial derivatives. And then we'll do a little bit of applying the differential by actually using partial derivatives. So let's just look at the right-hand side here. So let's denote f1 to be the function that takes x, y, z and gives y cosine ln x squared. Of course, we could take the partial derivatives and calculate um, what that part of the Jacobian is. But for this particular example, let's just focus on calculating the differential using uh, the theorems that we know and the usual derivatives of functions from real analysis of a single variable. So what we want to do is it would help to decompose this function into more elementary functions. So we'll start with our domain and we'll look at what we do to each of the um, components. Actually, we can even ignore the z component uh, because we know that the derivative in that direction is going to be 0 because it's a constant function with respect to that coordinate. So in fact, it suffices to ignore this coordinate for now. And when we come back to the Jacobian, to place a 0 in that entry. So we can ignore this last component. So first, before we even do anything, before we multiply, before we take logarithms or cosines or anything like that, we want to remind ourselves that we're starting with the point x, y. And the last step should be that we multiply the two entries. And if you notice, we do absolutely nothing to the y coordinate. And all the action is really happening in the x coordinate. And what's the first thing that happens? The first thing that happens is that we square x. So we apply the square function, and we leave the second component fixed. That's the identity. And where do we land? Well, we land in r. In fact, it's, um, again, r minus 0. Uh, or we can just say the positive real numbers. Let's just make it easy. Um, cross r. Now we're dealing with positive numbers. The logarithm function makes sense. So we apply that now to the, second, to the first uh, coordinate. And then we leave the second coordinate still fixed. Let's check to make sure all of this works out. When we square it, we get x squared, comma y. And then this now, logarithm is a function whose codomain is r, because it takes positive and negative values as well. And this gets sent to logarithm of x squared, comma y. We still haven't multiplied these two coordinates. Um, unfortunately, I'll run out of a little space here, but now what do we do? We take the first coordinate and we apply cosine, and we leave the second coordinate fixed yet again. And again, we get a function from r. Actually, the codomain is slightly smaller, but it won't matter for um, the functions that we're, the, the resulting functions that we'll be looking at. And this gives us cosine logarithm of x squared, comma, y. 
and then there's one last step, and the last step is to take the product. So here's where I ran out a little space, but then we take the product of these two elements, that's that function p, that just takes the product of its entries. Now to calculate the Jacobian, what we'd have to do is find the Jacobians for each of the functions. So the differentials associated to these functions are, and because we're going to be matrix multiplying, it's a good idea to put them in the same order that I've written them in. And let's work our way from right to left. So, and hopefully we'll have enough space. So the first function, let's check to make sure what the differential, what sort of a matrix the differential should be. The codomain is, has two components and the domain has two components. So it should be a two by two matrix. And not only that, but we know that the differential, when applied to a product, it puts it into block sums inside of our matrix. So the first block is the first function and then the second block is the second function. So this is going to be D at the point x, y of the square function cross the identity is equal to D x, the square function direct sum or cross product if, if that makes you feel a little bit uncomfortable. All this means is that we're taking the block sum of these two matrices um, with dy at the identity. The square function, the derivative of that is just at the point x is 2 times x. So that's 2x. And we're doing this block sum, so the off, the diagonal, the off diagonal terms are going to be 0. And then what's left over, dy of the identity, the identity is a linear transformation, so we just leave that fixed. And that means it's just the element 1. It's the identity 1 by 1 matrix, because again, this is a function from R to R. So this piece is a 1 by 1 matrix, this is a 1 by 1 matrix, and we're taking the block sum of those 1 by 1 matrices. So this is the matrix associated to the differential of the first function we have. The second function is D. Now we apply at the point x squared. So it's x squared comma y, and it's the logarithm cross the identity. And again, this is the, the differential applies through both sides, and it's going to be d x squared, L, the logarithm, direct sum, the identity. And what is the derivative of the logarithm? That's just 1 over the value of its input, and the input here is x squared. So the first coordinate is going to be x squared. Then it's 0, 0. 1 again. Now let's look at the next linear transformation. So the next one is we're taking d of cosine. So we apply d and now we're do evaluating at the point logarithm x squared comma y of cosine cross the identity. So again we have this block sum and this time the first the entry in the top left corner is going to be the derivative of cosine, that's minus sine, applied to the value logarithm of x squared. So it's going to be minus sine logarithm of x squared. And then 0, 0, 1. So this covers the first three transformations, the first three, the first three functions. And then the last one is the differential of the product function. So this is going to be dp, but what is it evaluated at? It's evaluated at cosine logarithm of x squared and y. And this is p. So remember the formula for d. Let's write this um, somewhere here on the side. d of a, B, P is the linear transformation, the matrix. By the way, um, I should have written this more clearly. It's a one by two matrix. So we're only going to have um, one row there. So this is going to be B, 
A. It's the matrix B A. So this is going to be the matrix Y cosine logarithm X squared. The 1 by 2 matrix. And then to get the resulting Jacobian, we multiply all of these together by the chain rule. So the chain rule says that's what we can do. That's what the chain rule means. So this is just going to be a 1 by 2 matrix as well. And the first entry is going to be y times the first entry here plus 0. So it's minus y sine logarithm of x squared. And then this one, the next term is going to be just cosine logarithm of x squared. So that's our 1 by 2 matrix. And then we have this one. So this one is going to be a 2 by 2 matrix. And it's this times this. So that gives me 2 over x. 0, then this is going to be 0 as well, and that's the identity. I guess we could have, we would have known that right away because we're taking the block sum of uh, matrices, so we know that we don't have to do all that matrix multiplication out. And then the result of this is just going to be another 1 by 2 matrix, and in the first coordinate it's going to be minus 2, let's see, yep, y over x, sine logarithm of x squared, and the next term is just going to be cosine logarithm of x squared. So that's the long method of calculating what the differential is. Uh, there's a short method, and the short method is just to use partial derivatives. So um, assuming we know the ordinary derivatives of functions, we can just take the first partial derivative of this with respect to x, and then we have to use the chain rule from how we remember that, and that's going to induce um, that 1 over x squared, but the derivative of that's going to give us another 2x from the chain rule, and acting on cosine is going to turn it into minus sine, and that's exactly this first term here. The first derivative, the derivative with respect to the first variable is going to give us this term. The derivative with respect to the second variable is just going to drop the y, and it's going to give us this. So it's a much faster way of calculating the differential, but you should be able to do both ways. And one of the reasons uh, is that, in general, we might not know what the partial derivatives even mean if you're looking at arbitrary subsets or specific kind of subsets of Rn that are not necessarily open. So this, this computes for us the differential, and if we wanted to find the differential of F1, all we have to do is add on an extra zero term in the third coordinate so that we have a 1 by 3 matrix. So this means that the associated Jacobian and now we'll actually calculate just using partial derivatives. So the Jacobian is going to be D F at X Y Z and the first row so let's keep let's leave some space and we've already calculated the bottom one, so let's plug that in. And then the last entry is this 0. And now, if we look at the first one, so the derivative with respect to x is going to drop down um, everything, except, so we'll have minus 2xz e to the negative x squared y as our first component. Then the next entry in the 2 by 3 matrix is going to be the derivative with respect to y. And that doesn't do anything. Oh, sorry, it drops down um, a minus x squared, doesn't it? Yeah, and so does this. Um, so there's actually a y here as well. So this drops down an x squared. Let's try to fix that in here, minus x squared, e to the minus x squared y, but that, that stays alone. And now, for the third component, that one's maybe the simplest one, it's just e to the negative x squared y. So this is the differential of f at the point x, y, z. So for instance, we can calculate, um, just for an example, we can calculate what the derivative of f is x, y, z, where we've set x, y, z to be, let's say, 1, 1, 1. And we can evaluate this. 
I should have just written 111 to not be confusing, but I hope you know what I mean. And then we can apply this to the vector. Let's just apply it to the vector 1, negative 1, 1. So if we calculate this associated Jacobian, when we plug in, and we have to be careful about what we plug in. Remember, we're plugging in x, y, z equals 1, 1, 1 here. So that's where we're plugging in all over, all over here. So this is just going to be negative 2 e to the negative 1. So that's negative 2 over e. And here we're going to have negative 1 e to the negative 1. So that's negative 1 over e. And then the last component is just going to be 1 over e. And we're all going to apply this when we're done to the vector 1, negative 1, 1. So on the bottom row, the logarithm of 1 is just 0. So all of these, um, so the, actually the first one is 0. Right? The first one is 0 because sine of 0 is 0. But cosine of 0 is 1. So that's that. And this is 0. So let's see what we get. When we multiply the first, so this one, these two add up. And this one cancels with that. So the first entry, which is going to be, by the way, a two-component vector, is going to be 0. And the next component is negative 1. So that's how you evaluate. So that's, this is how you calculate the differential of a function. You can do it in two ways, either calculating using theorems that we know, or you can calculate using partial derivatives. And then when you want to apply that differential to a specific vector, you make sure you plug in the values at the point that you're at because this depends on where you are, where you apply the differential. And then you can apply any vector whatsoever here. And then you can calculate using usual matrix multiplication to find out what the differential is at a point applied to a specific vector.